Should I be able to hear the differences between MP3 and FLAC? This question comes from Thomas in Rockla, Poland. Hey Paul, most of the time it's very hard for me to hear the audible differences between MP3 and FLAC. Is there something wrong with my equipment or is it me? I mostly listen to music through Fostex studio monitors, but it's equally hard to hear the difference when I'm using headphones. Is it worth it to pay extra money for the FLAC files? Will FLAC sound significantly better when I eventually buy a good audio system? I don't know how much more you're paying for FLAC. Uh, and by the way, FLAC is free lossless audio codec. And that's a way of losslessly compressing high, well, standard resolution audio it can also be high resolution. It's not, it's not specific. In general, I think what he's talking about is when he buys a FLAC encoded file, it's the full CD worth of audio on the FLAC file or an MP3, which is what we call a lossy file. It's called lossy because you're losing information. Now, I'll answer the first, the last part of the question first. Yeah, I, th I think it's worth it for you, depending on the difference in cost, and hopefully it's not too much, but I would always buy my stuff in FLAC or WAVE, some, some form that is uncompressed or, or, or not lossy, okay? And I would do that because you don't know about circumstances. Let's say if, if you take MP3 files on my system, you're going to be very disappointed. You're going to hear the, the, and if you compare the two, it, it's, it, it's, it's just not going to sound great. And now you're stuck with it. And if you have a whole library full of MP3s and, and you elevate your, result, your resolution of your system and, and the ability of that system to really show off all the qualities of the music being played, whether it's headphones or your studio monitors, then you're going to be disappointed. Now you have a library full of something you don't really want that's less than what you need. So yeah, stick with, stick with FLAC. To the question at hand though, why you can't hear the difference? Well, first off, there are varying levels of MP3. Some MP3, which if you have a very low amount of lossy information in the MP3, they can sound pretty good. They're certainly not as good as no MP3 or, or lossless, but they can sound pretty darn good. So I don't know what level of MP3 you're getting. It depends on the kind of music you're listening to as well. Some music, pretty badly recording, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. but. Um, I don't, I, I really don't know how to answer the question adequately because I don't know your circumstance and I don't know these Fostex. I can tell you that on my system at home, Terry's little system, and I just have a pair of Kef LS50s, a Sprout integrated amplifier, and a turntable. We can, <clears throat> even though obviously nothing on a turntable is MP3 because that's that would have to do with CD and digital. I can easily hear the differences in compression and in recording quality, and I can tell you that most of the albums that we listen to are hardly as good as some of the older stuff that we have around, like Sergio Mendez, Brazil 66. Surprisingly enough, out of all the albums we have, and we've got some great remastered, beautiful, heavy, heavy vinyl, uh, uh, products from, from companies that do such things, they, they don't sound anywhere near as good as, e as even the old Brazil 66. Because back in the day when people really cared about how things sounded, even the, the lowest quality of, of tape recorder uh, had, had an engineer behind it that really cared about compression and making instruments sound like instruments and voices sound like voices. Today, not so much something we're going to try and correct over time with our recording studio and we're going to show the world that it can be done that you can you can play grunge hey, okay here I'll I'll diverge somebody was saying you know you talk about your recording studio cuz it's going to be perfect and pure and all that stuff well not every musician wants perfect and pure right some of us want this this crunchy grungy sound to our guitars and our voices 
that's cool, I get it, that's okay. But let's record that crunchy grunge well, right? There is a difference and a big difference between taking something that is distorted by the musician, whether it be in his amplifier or in his uh, voice in the recording, and capturing that perfectly as opposed to getting that same crunch and grunge through distorting the recording process itself. Big difference. And we will attempt to demonstrate that difference to you over time and show you how, this sounds funny, but well-recorded grunge sounds very different than poorly recorded grunge. There is a difference, it makes a difference, and you can hear it even on the lowliest of systems, and we will show that. So, I don't know why you're not hearing the differences. Maybe it's because you have better MP3s? I don't know. But if you can, here's my advice. Go to a friend's house. Go to someone that you know and trust that can hear those differences. There's gotta be people around, e even people on the internet that you meet, and listen to it on their system. And then you'll find out, is it system specific, or is it just a matter of training for me? Hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.